It's your daily dose of uh, corporates and markets on the Monday night and you're watching Corporate Central. I'm Sreshtha Tiwari. Over to the day's uh, big corporate stories. First up in a big relief for embattled GoFirst. The airline's lenders have granted approval for an interim funding of approximately 400 crore rupees marking a key step in the ongoing efforts to keep the struggling airline afloat. The committee of creditors that includes Central, of, uh, Central Bank of India, Bank of Baroda, Deutsche Bank and IDBI Bank approved the request for additional funding. GoFirst had recently sought additional funding from lenders promising to get back to normalcy in operations at the earliest. Meanwhile, on June 24th, GoFirst announced that it is scheduled, uh, its uh, scheduled flight operations will remain cancelled till June 28th due to operational reasons. The Arani Group is aiming for a 20% year-on-year growth in pre-tax profits to reach 90,000 crore rupees EBITDA within the next two to three years. This growth is expected to come from sectors such as airports, energy, cement, renewables, transportation, logistics, power and transmission. The group has recently repaid loans amounting to $2.65 billion as part of a prepayment program to reduce overall leverage and regain investor trust after a negative report from a U.S. short sale. In further news, Adani Connex, a joint venture between Adani Enterprises and data center operator Edge Connex, has raised $213 million from lenders to set up two data centers of 67 megawatt capacity in the country. The firm would set up a data center of 50 megawatt capacity in Delhi and another with a 17 megawatt in Chennai. Reliance Geo Infocom is in talks to raise a loan for about $1.6 billion to fund the purchase of equipment from Nokia. Reportedly, banks involved in the discussions with Geo include Citigroup, HSBC Holdings and JP Morgan Chase. The loan uh, will likely have a maturity of 15 years and will be priced over the secured overnight financing rate. As the uh, deal has not yet been fa- finalized, the lineup of banks and the terms may still change. In another news, Reliance Industries is uh, testing a consumer uh, durable financing program under the Geo brand at select Reliance Digital Outlets before a full fledged launch of Geo Financial Services later this year. Vodafone Idea is in advanced talks with various network vendors for finalization of its much-awaited 5G rollout strategy and has concluded device testing of all major original equipment makers on its upcoming next-gen mobile broadband network, the company has said in its latest annual report for FY23. Vodafone Idea's chairman, Ravinder Thakur, in turn has reiterated that the telecom remains committed to ramping up 4G coverage and launching 5G. The company will continue to make investments for expanding 4G coverage and capacity, especially in 17 priority circles, and introduce 5G services once funding is in place. This uh, was said by Thakur in VI's latest annual report. HDFC Life Insurance has received demand notice and show cost notice for more than 942 crore rupees. The company has received this notice from the Directorate of Goods and Services Tax Intelligence. HDFC Life says that the company had claimed input tax credit in exchange for services, but DGGI believes that the company is ineligible for these claims. Through this notice, DGGI has asked the company why tax of 942 crore rupees should not be demanded from it. This matter is from July 2017 to FY22, on which the company says that matters related to ITC are a matter of dispute for the entire industry. Not only this, HDFC Life also said that the company will take appropriate steps to respond to the show cost notice and counter the matter. Although the company has deposited an amount of 250 crore rupees with DGGI in this matter, but is is under protest. According to information shared on Saturday, June 24th, Zydus Animal Health and Investments, a subsidiary of pharma business company Zydus Life Sciences, has entered into a share purchase agreement to buy 6.5% stake in MyLab Discovery Solutions for an amount of 106 crore rupees. According to this share purchase agreement, Zydus stake in this company will depend on the financial performance of MyLab till the end of March 2024. According to the company, through this investment in MyLab, Zydus will get an opportunity to become a partner in the expanding diagnostic space. Baiju's, which lost its auditor after delaying financial statements, has told investors that it will file 2022 audited earnings by September and 2023 results by December as per Reuters. Peak XV Partners, formerly Sequoia Capital India, Process and uh, 
Chan Zuckerberg initiative board members had also resigned without disclosing their reasons to the public. Also, Baijus has not deposited the Provident Fund money for most of its employees in FY24. As per reports, former employees of the company have shared screenshots of their EPF account passbook and salary slips which clearly suggest that Baijus hasn't deposited their PF money. The report also claimed that the EPFO data showed that Think and Learn Private Limited, the parent company of Baijus, has not paid the PF money. From corporates now moving on to those stocks that are grabbing headlines for the day and also let's analyze the reason behind it. Shares of uh, Shri Cement, one of the largest companies in the cement business in North India saw an intraday decline of up to 10% on Monday. The stock touched a low of 22,605.60 rupees during the trading session. The reason behind the fall in the stock is the news related to tax evasion. On Saturday, there were reports in uh, that the company had alleged evaded tax of 23,000 crore rupees. The case of tax evasion came to the fore after the investigation at the company's offices located in Biawar, Jaipur, Chittorgarh and Ajmer in Rajasthan. According to the report, this, is, uh, this case is one of the biggest tax evasions in the country. It has also been said in the report that the company has misappropriated 1,200 to 1,400 crore rupees of every year through tax evasion. Shri Cement issued a clarification to the stock exchanges on this matter saying that the investigation is still ongoing. It has also said that the speculative media reports uh, that were doing rounds were wrong and are one-sided. The stock closed down 5.59% uh, at 23,740 rupees. ICICI Securities, a subsidiary of ICICI Bank's broking business, saw a jump of up to 15% on Monday. The stock touched an intraday high of 647 rupees in the trading session, which is its 52-week uh, high. The reason behind this explosive rise in the stock is the board meeting of the company to be held on 29th of this month. The meeting will consider delisting the shares. This stock has been in action for the last one month and during this period, it has delivered a return of about 25%. However, there are reports of delisting through share swap instead of cash payout. Perhaps this is the reason why the stock closed almost a percent lower than the day's high. Shares of Ratan India Power, a company engaged in power generation business, saw a jump of up to 19% on Monday. Although it is a penny stock, that is the share price is less than 10 rupees, but in intraday the share touched a high of 5.60 rupees, which is very close to the 52-week high of 5.65 paise. The reason behind this boom is the total investment of 1,114 crore rupees in the company by the consortium of banks. Out of this investment, two funds run by Kotak Investment Advisors, a subsidiary of Kotak Mahindra Bank, have invested a total of 732 crore rupees in Ratan India Power. This investment has been done through non-convertible debentures. Out of this, uh, Kotak Strategic Situations India Fund 2 has invested 582 crore rupees and Kotak Private Credit Fund has invested 150 crore rupees. This amount will be used by Ratan India Power for refinancing the loan. Ratan India Power runs a 1,350 megawatt thermal power plant in Amravati district of Maharashtra. Shares of Cambridge Technology Enterprises, a small company involved in software development business, has seen a jump of up to 12% on Monday. The stock touched a high of 77 rupees during the trading session. The reason behind this boom is the acquisition by the company abroad. Cambridge Technology has bought US IT company AppShark software for 41 crore rupees for which approval has been received from the board. The acquired company AppShark is in business of uh, Salesforce consulting and custom software development. This acquisition is expected to be completed by March 2026. Apart from this, the company has also acquired a company named RP Web Apps for 3 crore rupees and this acquisition process is expected to be completed by July 30th. Well, that was all about corporates and markets for the day. But before the showdown, over to some important events and triggers which could make big market impacts. First up, SAT will uh, hear Subhash Chandra and Puneet Goenka's plea against the SEBI order. Tata Steel shareholders will meet to discuss merger with Tata Steel long products. HAL board will meet to discuss stock split and final dividend. LN Electronics pre-IPO lock-in period ends on June 27th. It will be the second day of Idea Forge IPO. The IPO has already garnered subscription of almost three times. The price band for the IPO has been fixed at 638 to 672 rupees per share. The IPO of uh, Scient opens on June 27th and Havels will hold its AGM. 
CEOs' a salary and allowances to be discussed. Globally, a US June consumer confidence figures to be released. Well, that's all tonight on Corporate Central. Catch all the other detailed updates from the corporate world and other major personal finance updates on Money9's website, www.money9.com and keep watching Money9.